recent MBA grad, Bronwyn Cruz, has just taken over her family's ice cream shop in Chagrin Falls, Ohio, and she's going back to basics. Gwen is renovating Cruz Creamery to restore its former glory and filling the menu with delicious homemade ice cream flavors, many from her grandmother's original recipe. But unexpected construction delay means she misses the summer season and the shop has a literal cold opening the day she opens her doors and early snow descends on the village and keeps the customers away. To make matters worse, that evening, Gwen finds a body in the snow, and it turns out the dead man was a grifter from an old feud with the Cruz family. Soon, Gwen's father is implicated in his death. It's not easy to juggle a new-to-her business while solving a crime, but Gwen is determined to do it. With the help of her quirky best friends and her tight-knit family, she'll catch the ice cold killer before she has him looked up. Okay, welcome back to Black Girl Reads. I'm your host, Jan. And I'm your co-host, Joy. And this is episode 10, I believe. Yes. <laughs> so this time we're reviewing A Deadly Inside Scoop by Abby Colette. And we're going to start off, as usual, with ratings. So, Joy, what would you rate this one? I think I'll rate this one um, a three and a half. 3.5. It's 3.5. like a cozy okay. murder mystery. It's perfect for, like... Um, a stormy day kind of you know you're reading you got some hot cocoa and it's perfect because it's like winter themed so it's like oh I am actually a little cold you know so I'm <laughs> got a little blanket so yeah what about you um, I'm going to I was going to say a three but I feel like that's a bit of a cop out but I'm still going to say a three actually <laughs> <laughs> for the same reasons like I like mystery books but this one, for some, I've never, when I read mystery, is normally like a thriller mystery, and I'm not used to like cozy mystery. Yeah. Which may be a good or a bad thing because I love cozy stuff, but I feel like this is something I would read when it is cold outside and I'm under a blanket and like mm-hmm. <laughs> doing something like that, like cozy activities. Yeah. Uh, so there's a time and a place. I feel like this is a three for that reason. I think so too. <laughs> like, it's, I don't, I don't hate it. I don't love, like, love, love it, but. It's a good story to read, you know? It was fun to read. Yeah. Yeah. It was a fun read. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, we're going to get into the discussion here. I have some questions prepared. And for anyone who doesn't want spoilers, just a heads up that there will be spoilers ahead. And make sure you come back after you read it. (laughs) Yeah. If you want to log off and read, then make sure you come back. All right, Joy, let's start with the discussion questions. We're going to start pretty uh, generic. What was your favorite character and why? I think my favorite character is hard to say. So her Bronwyn's mom, I see S me. <laughs> I would love to just like she was really sweet and she helped her out at her shop and everything, but she's also like, I did my time <laughs> doing 40 hour work weeks. <laughs> I'll come and help, but usually I'm doing yoga, I'm hanging out at home. <laughs> Okay, but so then, she was relatable to you. <laughs> yeah, but I really like Rifka too. The grandmother. Um, what's her name? Ria's grandma. Is it Ria's grandma? Maisie's grandma. Who lived okay. above the shop, I think it was. That had the cat. She was sweet. So I think the most relatable character is the mom. And then my favorite character was Rifka. I like that she was always feeding them. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I took it almost as a threat, like, here, eat this at least before she comes over and demands that we eat a bunch. But, I mean, that's grandma. <laughs> you know, that's grandma. And she gave them gloves, I believe, too, at one point. Because she was like, go eat some gloves. And then she turned up the heat in the ice cream shop. <laughs> She's like, it's an ice cream yeah. shop. It doesn't need to be that hot. <laughs> what about you? Who was your favorite? Let's talk about your least favorite first. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um... Shoot, who was my least favorite? Honestly, I said it was the cop. And it's not like political or anything. It was just like, <laughs> didn't do his job at all. And then like, when he's like questioning the first night when the body's found, and he let Ren um, question, uh, what was her name? Um, the kid's mom, Jasper's mom, Glennis. She's like, well, 
he was down there. I saw him. What else were you doing? Like, she was questioning. He was just looking like, yeah, what was he doing down there? You know, like, this ain't, no, this can't happen. This is a murder going on, you know? Like, you're supposed she's like, yeah, I saw her. And how mad would you be being Bryn? Like, yeah, I saw that kid. He's over there. And then they bring them to you. You know, like, they said that you saw them there, you know? <laughs> but, yeah, you really just out of me as a snitch. That's a good point. Like, if they're a the murderer, now they know who to come to as, like, who the witness was. Right. So uh, I didn't like the cop either. He seemed very incompetent and arrogant at the same time. Like, how can you be know? incompetent and arrogant? Like, <laughs> yeah. I thought Maisie was dead on when she kept calling him the stupid cop or something. <laughs> what did she too. keep calling him? Oh, girl. Maisie I was funny. Her, right? I, she she was. annoyed me a lot, but she was funny at times. Yeah. <laughs> I feel like we all have a Maisie in our lives and a Rhea, honestly. Rhea was insane. Sometimes I'm afraid I, it, it that I'm so the Maisie. It was so confusing to me. What? I said, sometimes I'm afraid I'm the Maisie in my friend's group. <laughs> Why is that something to be afraid of? I don't know. She was kind of annoying. But, like, she was cool, though, too, like, at times. And she gardened, like, her whole greenhouse situation. And she, like, grew the produce. I yeah. I feel like she was annoying in that, like, the way she went about solving mysteries... Yeah. It was a little annoying, but her as a character, I didn't find like too annoying. True, true. You're right. All right, now your turn. Stop. Um, we <laughs> were putting it off. Who was your favorite? Who was my favorite? <laughs> I like the cat. <laughs> Girl, <laughs> stop the it. Cat. Stop it. The cat, the cat coming in the shop. It was pretty cool. <laughs> no, I'm joking. Um, I don't know. I guess I would say Maisie is probably my favorite, even though she was annoying me a lot. <laughs> what was the guy? Ari. Okay, so I don't think it was right that she accused Ari right away. I thought that was insane. And honestly, that's one of the reasons why this book isn't rated higher for me. Just because like their detective solving skills were awful. Like, how did it take um, the guy that was crushing on her to tell them that they can find information online? Right. <laughs> like, right. You have to be at least a millennial. Like, what is happening that you don't understand that intrinsically? Like, that should be in your DNA to But Google that should something. be number one thing you do. <laughs> exactly. Like, if you're going to solve a crime, the internet is your friend. Duh. <laughs> <laughs> but do you think- it really annoyed me that they had it. he had to tell them that. Do you think it was kind of because it's a cozy mystery? It's like, Let's think back to like, I don't know, murder she wrote or something like that. Like, let's try to think about it before just going straight to Google. You know, let's go look at the newspapers in the library. <laughs> kind of. Like, I've never you know. seen murder she wrote, so I have no idea what you're talking about. <gasps> but just because you have some information on people on the internet doesn't mean you don't have to think about solving a murder. You True. Know? <laughs> True. Just some I'm not sure. sleuthing. <laughs> That is old fashioned, though. It's just cutting out the part about going to the library, right? You find a suspect, you research them, and then you try to figure out. You still have to go and talk to them to figure out where they were that day. But the coziness <laughs> is crazy. the library setting. The coziness is like, oh, this is kind of scary. Like, oh, we found this guy in the newspaper and he's over there reading a book. Like, you know, it's like, it's not like really stakes. But you're... the murder happened in front of their ice cream shop. That could have been, they could have been at the table with grandpa, which I don't understand why he didn't tell them that he was onto them earlier. They could have been at the table with grandpa, like doing research and look up and see the little boy with the scarf going by and say, oh, they're over there doing the same shit they were doing the night of the murder. <laughs> like, I mean, you're right. You're right. And also he's not grandpa. He's pop pop. Oh. Yeah, you're right. Pop pop. <laughs> <laughs> Consider me told. <laughs> so yeah, I I guess that kind of I I digress the, quite a bit, but Maisie was my favorite character, despite the fact that she was an awful detective, and mm -hmm. she jumped to a lot of conclusions. Mm -hmm. That was my main gripe with her. It was just annoying that she was so bad at it, even though she's the only one to do it. Mm -hmm. um, and the least favorite male, my least favorite character. Why did I think about this? <laughs> Like, come on you did the questions girl like come on <laughs> oh my mind has been everywhere lately 
My least favorite character. Oh wait, I want to change mine. Probably Ari. No, really? wait. Ari is my least favorite character. First of all, because I feel like I'm not sure if I should say this, but he gave off like light skin energy, <laughs> big time. <laughs> or yeah, he was just like above everybody. Like yeah. you know, you messed up, and like still, like they're t- coming to you and saying you might be co- the culprit. Whatever. Like, oh, well, my dad's getting blamed. I don't care. And I'm like, this is you trying to make amends for the shit you've done in your past. Exactly. Get it together. Like, he was just so condescending the entire time, even though he said, quote unquote, he was trying to be a better person. Like, what part of anything that you're doing makes you a better person? Or maybe it's just because they were annoying because the stuff that they were doing was annoying, too. Mm -hmm. I think it was kind of unbelievable the way she confronted him when they were doing the, like, walkabout. Like you've been quiet this whole time and trying to be cautious and all of a sudden you're just going to confront him like, oh, by the way, Ari, I think you murdered this person. That was not at all slick. Right. (laughs) I don't know. You can't accuse people and then not have like a weapon on you. (laughs) So it's just like, oh, yeah, I did actually. Yeah. Yeah. And now you're in there like. (laughs) But um, right. I want to trace my, my answer to who I like what what I like the least about it and it was the snow the Ohio snow it brought me back to walk it okay. <laughs> in the slush because <laughs> we, we grew up in Ohio so actually what, was it in Cuyahoga or was it somewhere around there right oh my goodness yes it was Cuyahoga <laughs> County yes we were in South Euclid Lindhurst which they mentioned in the book mm-hmm. and this takes place in Chagrin Falls which is very close to where we were yeah. I know you. We moved away when we were young, but I feel like you should still know that. <laughs> no, I mean, I moved, we moved away lots of freshmen in high school. So I mean, it didn't really make too much. Like it didn't mean too much for me yet. But um, what she said, oh yeah, we can't use this bad snow for the ice cream. Yeah, go to the good fluffy stuff. I knew exactly what she was picturing. I knew exactly like the slush she was talking about, the dirty stuff. You know, the ice that like kind of like lays on top. Like no, that's not the good stuff. <laughs> here's my thing though i feel like regardless like that recipe was just gross to me because you never know what's gonna happen like yeah i understand it just freshly like falling in snow but a bird could have came and pooped in that <laughs> like, not even just that just wind water, blowing no. dirt water and that debris. Are, the water that made the snow <laughs> i mean you're by lake erie come on <laughs> it was on fire at one yeah point. <laughs> So in case you didn't read it, just so you know what we're talking about, she had a recipe book for different kind of ice creams from her grandmother. Mm -hmm. And one of them, one of the ingredients was freshly fallen snow. So she found the body because she went out near the creek, down a hill to the creek to dig up fresh snow for this recipe, which I don't agree with at all. (laughs) But just think about that. Like somebody went down there and died. <laughs> like you never know what's going on. Right. With like, yeah, it, it just seemed a little gross. And, and I feel I, like I might be overreacting, but I also feel like I'm not. So. I know I heard of ice cream from, I like, I know it's a book. I know it's just like, you know, it's fiction. But if anything, I was thinking like shave ice is the closest thing I could think of making with snow, you know? Yeah. And I guess she said the reason like her grandmother made this recipe is because she was from the South and she'd never seen snow before. So she made this recipe. But at the same time, you could still go and get an ice like machine or whatever, like shaver and like do that. Like you don't need actual snow. And maybe I'm being judgy. Let us know what you guys think. Would you eat ice cream that was made with freshly fallen snow? Maybe artificial (laughs) snow. Nah, because that's artificial. Like you don't eat that. Like. (laughs) But I also eat Doritos. Girl, oh. what? <laughs> <laughs> I think my that answer is, is no. <laughs> yeah, let's just keep it at a no, Joy. <laughs> let's cut that out. Cut that out. <laughs> um, but yeah. Um, it was it's funny that you mentioned too that her grandmother's from the south because I kind of saw like parallels with our family, like because our family on our dad's side is from the South that we know for sure that moves up to Ohio. So it was like, oh, yeah, that's kind of cool, you know? So. Yeah, kind of cool. Yeah. Okay, uh, so my next question was, 
the setting of the book is in an ice cream shop. Do you think that the author used this unique setting to enhance the story? And um, what did you think it did for the plot? Or do you feel like it was um, not a factor at all? I feel like she could have been doing anything. I feel like she could have been just sledding on this fresh snow and found a body, <laughs> you know, and just been sucked into it that way. Um, I don't think that it was necessary, but I do see how it kind of like added more dimension to her as a character and added more dimension to the story. But I do feel I like sometimes like the ice cream making took too much of the book, you know? At the beginning, yes, I feel like it was like, I don't really care about these ice cream recipes. But at the same time, it did put me in that like cozy vibe, you know, when she was just making ice cream and talking about her grandmother and how they used to do it together. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, it did a lot to like build depth in her character and to add to like the kind of conflict in the story since she opened, <laughs> she opened not in winter. It wasn't winter yet, but you know how Ohio is. Like oh, they had winter. an early snowfall. <laughs> yeah. She said the first Halloween snowfall time. of the year. Yeah. I'm... The first snowfall of the year they got is when they opened. So that was crazy. Yeah, and she, not only that, she said that morning when she was getting ready, she wasn't expecting a bunch of snow, and it ended up being like a snowstorm, yeah, <laughs> and so forever. So that was pretty crazy. Yeah, but I don't know. Like, I like it, and I don't like it. I just feel like I like it because, like you said, it's cozy, but I don't like it just because I think it was just used a little too much, you know. And it almost gives me like the vibe of like, oh, I stumbled across a murder. Let's figure it out. But instead of figuring out, we kept going back to the ice cream. You know, a little too much for me. Yes, but I don't feel like they talked about ice cream every time they went back. It kind of just became their central hub or where they would meet up, which I felt like was a good, like, device. Um, instead of everybody, like, meeting up at her house and you're just like, why does everyone keep showing up here? Like, that was a, it gave them a purpose to all meet up and, like, unravel the story bit by bit, you know? I mean, you can't meet up just being friends. <laughs> like, girl, was all in a mystery. No, Let's that's not over. what I mean. I mean, like, all the new characters, like the uh -huh. guy who was crushing on her and the grandpa and the mom that they were, like, trying to hide everything from. The dad would pop up, like, without the warning, you know? Like, it just True. added a little bit more conflict to the story. And, yeah, yeah, I feel like it, it was a good plot device for that, you know? Driving like the, the story. and Yeah. Mm -hmm. It could also have been a car wash. It could have been a library. <laughs> it could have been, you know. It could have, but I feel like ice cream shop is unique. Yeah. And it's cozy. So for that reason, I feel like it was good. Like it could have been something else, but I don't think it needed to be, you know. Do you think that it being in Ohio mattered during winter time? I mean, I feel like it could have been any like northern state where it snows. <laughs> <laughs> so, no, I mean. I don't think if they're going to have like that's the plot point is it is a plot point. The fact that they opened on the first snowfall of the year it didn't necessarily need to be Ohio, but it needs to be somewhere where it gets cold and it's like kind of unexpected weather. You know, they say weather in Ohio, if you don't like it, just wait five minutes. So, <laughs> yeah, I feel like it gave that like kind of unexpected weather like um, conflict. Do you think it's very specific in the area, too? Do you think she's from there? Because I hear a lot of people talk about Cuyahoga and South Euclid and Lindhurst, <laughs> like much Jamie less Abby Collette, able to pronounce like it. The author? Yeah. Um, I'm not sure. We can definitely look that up, though. Look it up. Oh, it's my turn to do some sleuthing. Oh, gee, I remind me that we have <laughs> Google. We probably go to the library. Enough. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, okay. <laughs> oh, yeah. She was born and raised in Cleveland. So that makes sense. There you go. Okay. So next question. We kind of talked about this already, but I have it written down. So we're going to go over it again. Um, did you find, like, when she was trying to uncover this, like, mysterious death, did you find her investigation to be believable? And do you feel like she took risks that seemed unrealistic? And I'm just going to recover really quick. Or revamp really quick what I said about, you know, the time she confronted Ari, even though she was terrified of him when they went to his office, I feel like was a little unrealistic. Mm -hmm. And we've already talked about it. So other than that, do you feel like there are any risks they took that was unrealistic? Or what do you think was believable? Any I, thoughts on that? 
I think that almost most of it was unrealistic and unbelievable, especially as a black woman. <laughs> like, it's already scary enough to find a body, especially so close to your child. Come, like, I'm scared to call the cops. Like, they're going to think I did it. So. <laughs> that, okay, so what was crazy to me is that she went back to the shop and made ice cream. Like, I would be at my mom's house for the rest of the week. Yeah. Like, that level of freaked out, especially since she was so close to them. I would not have gone back to work by myself. Mm -hmm. When there's a murderer on the loose, mm -hmm. yeah, <laughs> insane. And it's like it's like giving you the heebie-jeebies that she was just talking to him and everything. Like it's weird. And then like the whole like sneaking into Ari's office, like you said, like I just I don't see many people. Period doing that, but to me, looking for something on someone that's a murderer, not like oh let's go change a grade or something, something stupid, you know? Like this is a lot of risk you're taking. I'm just like. Here's my statement. I found this body. Uh, I saw that kid over there. Don't call them over here. <laughs> and that's it. You know? <laughs> Get a real what good I alarm thought, system. <laughs> what I thought was unbelievable, too, is that she would go to the police station after she saw the cop at her dad's house questioning him just to say, my dad didn't do it. And if you knew my dad, you would know that he didn't do it. I don't, he doesn't know every murder suspect. He has to investigate. Like, why are you going to the police station just to say, hey, I don't think my dad did it? Of course you don't. Every murderer's dad or kid doesn't think that their dad is going to be a murderer. Like, that, how did you think that was going to affect his investigation? It's not. Exactly. <laughs> like, I, that was just so annoying to me. <laughs> I call it main character energy. Like, it doesn't really matter. <laughs> like, like no one else on this planet exists. Yeah. But your like, dad didn't do it. Right. That's important. <laughs> like, you even said yourself, like, it was suspicious. Like, the way it read to me at the beginning, especially when she first found it, he showed up late and everything. It's like, oh, he wasn't wearing, he doesn't wear that kind of stuff to work or whatever. It's just like, it's not like you suspect him. So why wouldn't this detective who don't know him wouldn't suspect them? You know, it's just like, you're yeah. looking real suspicious. <laughs> <laughs> and when she gave the evidence to her brother, even, her brother was like, oh, wow, yeah. Definitely look into this because yeah, y'all know looking kind of guilty. Yeah, I don't, she just didn't make she didn't make a lot of sense to me. But it's a fiction; it's fun. So I try not. I'm trying not to look too deep into it. You know, it was still fun to read. It was still a fun read. Yeah, you know, not all characters are perfect though, and I feel like that was a, <laughs> that was a um, shining example. Dimbo moments, maybe. <laughs> oh. <laughs> it just wasn't smart and i understand her emotions are like were ruling her at that point because she was worried for her dad but man but there's ways to go about that even if you like think you're close to the detective like well first of all don't trust cops don't talk to cops it's just like i just if anything she made it worse i feel like hmm. yeah. realistically I just, I feel like if I were the cop, I would be annoyed. I wouldn't give her the time of day. Like, mm -hmm. you gave me no evidence to say that he wasn't the murderer. You just came to tell me you were unhappy that I'm investigating him, which, in a murder, I'm not going to base my investigation off of your feelings. Right. Like, ethics, though. Right? <laughs> right. <laughs> and so, in the book, there are a lot of elements of, like, mystery but cozy, which I already said, like, isn't a vibe that I normally get from mysteries. Like, it's always a thriller and I'm terrified. Yeah. Um, I wasn't really scared at all during this book. So how do you feel about that? Like, those two genres together? What, like, rather than thriller mystery, it was cozy mystery, which is the first I can say I've ever read like this. So, like I said, like, if you think about... So, uh, Murder, She Wrote is basically, like, a C CSI or something, whatever, like Bones or whatever. It's like a detective show, but it's like a little lady. She's like a sleuth, pretty much, <laughs> you know. And that's so cute. It's like a cute way to to do a detective. Like she's a writer, but all of a sudden she's like finding murders and she's figuring it out, and it's fun, you know. She goes to different locations. Like it's a fun kind of mystery show, and so it's kind of like Bones and that, like that, but it's cozy. You know, and this is, it gives me that vibe with okay. a book. You know what I mean? I keep saying Murder, She Wrote, because I can't really think of any more right now. But I have it's one. just like, what? And I say this because I said this is the first time I've read something like this. Mm 
mm-hmm. but it kind of put me in the mood of like Scooby-Doo where it's more like yeah, fun and yeah. scary, yeah. you know, like, which I don't mind at all. So, Literally. <laughs> it's like if you give like a, a premiere, like an hour show, you yeah. know, on Scooby, he's like, oh, okay, cool. You know, we're in this, you know? So that's, that's what I'm thinking, but like for adults, not that Scooby-Doo, I watch Scooby-Doo all day long, but yeah. you know what I mean? You you see what I'm saying. <laughs> but yeah, it's like, yeah, oh, it's like sure. Yeah, I like it though. Like everything doesn't have to be scary. Everything doesn't have to be a thriller. I liked it. Agreed, completely agreed. Because you know I don't like horror thriller that much anyway. Because I'm a scaredy cat. Yeah. So if I ever want a mystery, I would definitely like pick up another one of these books. Which actually was one of my discussion topics. Okay, so a daily inside scoop is the first book in a series. Did you know that there are other books? Yes, I did. Okay, yeah, I didn't realize until halfway through when I looked it up, but uh, it makes sense seeing as how I feel like the ending was a little bit unresolved. Would you go to another one of these books in the future? I would go to another one of these books if I was like at your house or something. It's like it's storming, you know, the lights went out and I'm just like, oh, there's nothing to do. Let's look, let's see what Jan has on her bookshelf. I don't think I would necessarily go out and buy another one, but like oh what is this a, de- a daily inside scoop you know <laughs> part two you know um i might do that but i'm not sure like cozy mystery it was nice but i'm the complete opposite of you i love horror things I love things about ghosts and demons so <laughs> it's not really my vibe but i still liked it though it was a nice p- change of pace you know it's funny it's like around halloween time because i used to like horror a lot <laughs> I wouldn't say a lot, but I used to watch it at least. You know? <laughs> I had to think about that. And during Halloween, I kind of want that kind of thrill, but I'm too scared. So I don't do it. <laughs> so Halloween, I will definitely be reading Abby Cola and the rest of the series. Yeah, absolutely. I think I think it's really cute. I don't think it's scary enough for me for Halloween, though. I think it's like the end of winter turning into spring thunderstorm vibe for me personally yeah i'll take it during halloween <laughs> <laughs> well, even this is the level of scary that i need <laughs> yeah 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 or you know oh, we you talked girl. about white smoke where i was like it's not that scary it's not but like during it I was like, oh, I'm so <laughs> terrified. <laughs> like that's like a level up from this and that was maybe a little bit too scary. So, yeah, this is something I would go to even if I'm alone. White Smoke, I would read if I were in the house with someone. Or but if like it was completely room. light. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Girl, I got to get you some, like, real scary stories going or something. No, you don't. <laughs> okay. I don't need it. So, all right. All right. All right. I know you said that you didn't care for all the ice cream talk but did you have a favorite ice cream flavor because they had a lot of them um so here's the thing (laughs) i'm not one for like a lot of artesian kind of flavors i'm not one to like kind of like mix things up i'm a chocolate kind of girl i'm like on a good like on a day when i'm feeling spicy i get a twist of vanilla chocolate (laughs) can you say that my ice cream choices are quite vanilla (laughs) <laughs> but you like chocolate so it's the opposite right it, it's know. funny but like i like cookies and cream chocolate and a twist baby i didn't care for any of the flavors and that's probably why i was so like all right caramel ice cream okay like you know caramel popcorn ice cream it's just like it sounds like too much you know it feels like i'm going to a gentrified part of dc for 18 dollar ice cream <laughs> i mean you know I've been in Austin the last decade of my life, so the popcorn ice cream actually sounded really good to me. <laughs> no, ma'am. Um, no, ma'am. So you would like the decadent chocolate then, though. That's the only flavor other than the snow one that I was like, I won't eat because I don't like chocolate ice cream. <laughs> but the decadent, it, it sounds like if I like chocolate, I would like that one. I can't be too much chocolate. It can also be too much, though. That's how I feel about all chocolates, to be honest. I will have, like, cookies and cream. I will have ice cream with chocolate in it. But chocolate ice cream is just a little bit too much. <laughs> no, like, once you start getting to decadent, like, I need the chocolate ice cream and the chocolate syrup and the brownie and this and that. I'm like, that's too much. <laughs> like, you know, I feel like I'm going to be sick. 
You know what? We didn't like discuss him at all as like favorite and least favorite characters. But do you remember the guy's name who was crushing on her? I don't either. I what don't... did you think about his character? I felt like he was a little weird. Yeah. In like... a good way, but still a little weird. <laughs> I don't know. It just there were so many characters to keep up with. He kind of faded to the background for me. I feel like him at the end was kind of thrown in randomly, even though he did get them that gig. Mm -hmm. Like him to say, okay, tell me who it is and I'll call the police. And then she went and got like captured. I feel like he didn't need to be in that scene at all. Yeah. He could have just told Maisie. Yeah. Like, there was no reason for them to tell him to call the police. They could have just called the police. So. I feel like that makes more sense when you think about it as a series as well. Like he's going to be a character in another story. I'm just like, if he's going to be a character in another story, just bring him in the next story. I just feel like there's already a lot of characters. But that's another thing. The cozy thing. so like, many characters. Like you have like, oh, they know this and this, they know this and that know this. Like I understand you have to have a list of characters to choose from, like who's the bad guy. But I just feel like once we hit like 12, <laughs> it was a little too much for me. Especially since my memory is not great anyway. <laughs> well, right. I have like notes. I wrote down every character and when she brought them up, I tried to write like something about them, but it was a lot. <laughs> I will say that it makes sense since it's a murder mystery, you have to have a lot of options to figure out who it was. Mm -hmm. It killed me that they kept saying first and last name. I felt like I knew these people in Ohio. Like, oh yeah, the, yeah. the Bronwyns or the Cruz family or... Mm -hmm. Ron wins. That's her first name. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it also makes sense that there are so many characters since this is a series. Like it put me back into reading Harry Potter for the first time where there were so many characters and I yeah. cared about none of them. But then throughout the series, they came up and I was like, oh, yeah, I know exactly who that was. That was the person who wore the funny hat in book one. <laughs> so, like, I can see it. They don't even but... have to come up a ton, but you yeah. remember them from that one time, you know? I just think if the more that you think about it as a series, like just like Murder, She Wrote or Scooby-Doo, these people are recurring characters, I guess. So I yeah, guess it's she nice. she setting yeah. the stage up for a whole series rather than just one book. There are so many names thrown out that I feel like were unnecessary, but they may come up in a significant way later on. Speaking of names, um, did you like her name? Browin? Bronwyn. It's Bronwyn. such a weird one. I don't necessarily... I would never name my child Bronwyn. <laughs> yeah. But maybe it's a family name. I don't know. I liked her nickname. I like that they called her Wynn. What are you thinking of it like W I N or W R E N? She spelled it W Y N. Oh. But when they said the nickname, it was W I N. Yeah, I was thinking Wren. So to clarify, I listened to the book on Audible. So whenever they yeah. said it, I just think it Ren, W R E N. No, I I thought you were saying Ren earlier, and I was like, yeah. maybe she's just slurring it. But no, it was Win, like lose oh. or win, win or lose, like Wendy, because it was Bron Win. Yeah, got you. Okay, okay, okay. That makes a little bit more sense. But I mean, it's a cute name. I think it grows on you. I know someone named Stone. <clears throat> so like a rock. <laughs> mm -hmm. Like a bow. I like that. <laughs> I like unique names and maybe it's because we're black <laughs> but the more unique I think is like it's nice you know everyone doesn't have to be named Ashley and then to mix it up it doesn't have to be you know spelled differently just get a different name I think my mouth just stumbles over it a little bit but if I got used to it I think it would be fine I think I mix up my W's and R's ever since <laughs> I was a kid so it was hard for me but I think it's a cute name I wouldn't name my kid okay. it because I can't pronounce it. <laughs> Here's a question for you. Mm -hmm. When they introduce, is it Steven? Was that the victim's name? They changed his name a lot, but I think yeah. it was Steven. We're going to go with Steven. <laughs> when they introduced him, did you think he was going to be the victim? I thought it was so weird how he just started talking to her and she didn't get scared when there was no one around. <laughs> he had a puppy. I mean, he would have kidnapped me. Like... <laughs> You know, I would have been a victim. <laughs> I would have did the same thing. I'm like, no, I don't know whose dog this is. This is a really cute dog, though. Good luck. And you're going the wrong way. That's suspicious. Maybe I just uh, almost got kidnapped. 
<laughs> Let me hurry up and get a bar ice cream shop. <laughs> he didn't really ask her to go anywhere, but right? I can and it see wasn't a car that nearby. The kidnap. <laughs> yeah, I can see how that would be the beginning of a kidnapping scheme. But like, he's gonna <laughs> like, oh, can you, you know, walk with me to the police station around this corner or something, or you know, just hop in the car and show me directions or something. It wasn't anything that he's like, hey. Is this dark yours? No? Okay. You know? <laughs> so. Yeah. I don't really get what his motivation was for talking to her, to be honest. Yeah. Um, and that may be something that I'm missing. Mm -hmm. Because he came back, it seemed like, to blackmail Ari. So I'm not sure why he pretended he had a lost dog when in reality it was his dog. And why he would tell her that he was close to her parents or grandparents, unless maybe he was just trying to get more information because he said he would stop by to see the grandpa. But I don't think that was true that he was going to really stop by. No, of course not. Because he never did. So I don't understand the motivation for any of that or even like tying himself to the shop next door. I'm not sure why he would do that. I think she was kind of fishing to see how much she knew if she recognized the dog like, or if she recognized him. Or she knew how much her, if her parents or her grandparents talked about what happened at the bicycle shop and how it was kind of shady things going over there. Like, if she knew anything about it, but she didn't. So I think it's one of those things just like, if you're on the up and up, see if you're on the up and up, you know? Like, if you know anything he about care, what happened. Though? I mean, I don't know. Like, you don't know what his motivation was because he died. <laughs> you know, he was only there for a hot minute, you know? Yeah. So. Yeah, yeah. I just thought it was weird. I swear, it. it the only reason I'm sticking on it is because I feel like I'm missing something. You know? Yeah, <laughs> it kind of makes me want to go back and reread it. You guys, let us know in the comments if you feel like we're missing something or if we're just like being oblivious. <laughs> <laughs> For the life of me, I can't figure out why he would like all the things he said. Like, if he really didn't want to tie himself to all the shady stuff going in the shop next door why say i own the shop next door in case why she say heard I about your it. grandparents why give her clues and give so many specifics about your favorite ice cream flavor when you know <laughs> no it was a lie and even with that it seemed like they were friends for a long time before he scammed the grandmother to sign over their ice cream shop to him yeah. So why not give a real flavor? Why did you give a fake flavor? <laughs> Maybe, I, like like I said, I think he was just fishing to see how much she knew. Like, once she started talking about, oh, this is my shop. Like, oh, you're part of the cruises. So let's dig into what you know, you know? And then she didn't know anything. It's like, oh, okay, whatever. Okay, well. I still don't think it makes a ton of sense. I feel like, yes, if he's digging for information, it makes sense that he prolonged the conversation. Mm -hmm. Especially to see if their grandparents still lived there if he was planning on dropping in before he was. But mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. as far as giving her like wrong ice cream flavors, like I feel like he should have known what ice cream flavors they had. I mean, just dropping a bucket. Like you saw how quickly they made one up. But like, what if they just didn't make that? You know what I mean? Like, I don't know. Yeah. They made it on a one off one summer day. So who knows? Was her love interest named Aaron? And girl, I don't... Let me see if I wrote his um, info down. He just came and went so quickly. <laughs> and I feel bad saying it, but he's just kind of like faded into the background. Oh, yeah. His name was Steve, the guy with the dog. I already knew that. <laughs> Obviously, I'm a genius. Yeah, my character <laughs> list. Um, see my long character list? Huh. It just goes on. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, no, he's not on air at all. So I don't know if I just gave up writing he down wasn't characters even, or like, what. Significant enough to make it to the character list. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think well, it wasn't even significant. I think I just gave up after like so long, so many people could keep up with the fingers. He was at the beginning though, because she she met him in the soup shop. So I feel like it was a weird dynamic between her and the love interest, even though we can't remember his name, because she never seemed interested in him from the beginning. Like, even at the soup shop, she was like, okay, I'm going to talk to you, but then I'm going to angle my body away so that you won't continue the conversation. Yeah. And then he showed up at the ice cream shop, and she went to the back, and he talked to her grandfather. 
And then when he came back, the mother and her friend is like, hey, go talk to him. And she's like, again, not interested. Like she never showed any interest in him. And he's like getting her jobs and coming around and saying like, oh, do you have any new flavors? No, maybe you should come a different day. No, no, I'll still come today. Right, 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 right. <laughs> Um, it no, was yeah. just so awkward their dynamic for me but maybe it was like cute for you <laughs> like, I mean, it's how did you little, feel about it they were just two awkward introverted people you know I think mean, I'm very extroverted so if I like you I just tell you if I don't I just don't carry on the conversation you know but I don't know like it was it was a little awkward <laughs> I feel like it was kind of unnecessary, their dynamic, or maybe she was just awkward. I would have enjoyed it more if she were attracted to him. Yeah. Like, his behavior would have been considered cute had she reciprocated in any way. Like, it kind of felt like stalking. A little bit. Yeah. It was like weird, the weird guy that you just let do nice things for you because it's convenient. You know? It made me uncomfortable. Yeah. I, I didn't care for it. It just kind of like seemed like a little shoehorned in there. I think that's what you call it. I don't think it was necessary. I don't think every book or every mystery needs to have romance aspect of it. Normally, I appreciate a good, like, little relationship on the side, but it didn't seem like that to me. It just seemed weird. Yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> I felt bad for him a lot. I mean, not like, feel bad because she wasn't reciprocating, but because he wasn't picking up on the clue. Like, are you this oblivious? I feel yeah. bad that I didn't remember him. <laughs> <laughs> now that we talk about him just a like more. she never remembered him yeah yeah <laughs> sorry <laughs> next question i'm not a bad person <laughs> <laughs> so this book took place in chagrin falls where there are not a lot of black people which we can relate to like being in lynn Hurts, where there weren't a lot of black people and you're kind of like the only um not the only but one of the few black flam families around like yeah, how cool. How do you feel like she handled that dynamic? Do you feel like it was realistic? Do you feel like she talked about it a little too much? Not enough? Do you feel like it was a good mixture? I never say that it was it's ever too much to talk about the people of color in your neighborhood or the black people in your neighborhood. Honestly, I would love if you talk about it more. You know, <laughs> I appreciate that she put it into the writing, just like, oh, it's not too many of us. And it's kind of like we have our dynamic and then the wider dynamic, how we talk to each other and how we. Um, act around each other and then how we act around the rest of the neighborhood. You know what I mean? So I think that's I realistic. I feel like she did, she did it in a really nice way. It was a great balance. Mm -hmm. um, it wasn't something that she harped on, but it was definitely a part of the book. Mm -hmm. I think it's impressive that she had a story with cops in it that wasn't filled with trauma, right, even though she did touch on the fact that black people and police have a kind of like strained relationship. Like she touched on all those things without making it a traumatic book, which I feel like it's hard to do, mm -hmm. especially being realistic. But you know, yeah, I think she did it really well. I think it's, it, it's very, um, what is it? Um, very, uh, I don't know what the word exactly that I'm looking for. Maybe you'll, you'll see what I'm talking about, but I think it's very, oh, telling of when I was like, I'm afraid I haven't found the body. You know, that's not should have been the reaction of you finding a dead body, you know? <laughs> so um, yeah, I think that that was like part of it being a, the mystery too and being a black woman that found a body behind your shop. So, mm -hmm. I mean, I think it has to be said. It's a black woman and a murder mystery. It doesn't, isn't, you know, you don't get the benefit of the doubt all the time. Which is why I was surprised that she was surprised that her dad was a suspect. You know, <laughs> you know, you're lucky they get, didn't get dragged up off in cuffs that night, as well as yeah. the little kid. <laughs> it gives me very much like Carlton from Fresh Prince of Bel Air vibes. Like you are a black person, but being in Chagrin Falls, it's not like it's a super ritzy area, but it's also like not a low income area, so you do have some privilege. Not as yeah. much as your like white counterparts, but I think yeah, you have she, enough. She to... was definitely sheltered, yeah, a little bit. That's the thing. Like I feel like she had enough privilege wow. to be a little confused or a little lost. Like, oh well, it's the cops, though. You know, <laughs> but I mean, they're here to do good stuff. 
And so, you know, they have their own experience or whatever. Um, but yeah, I agree. It's definitely the Carlton when they get pulled over by the cop, the racist cop. <laughs> um, yeah. But yeah, that was the only thing that kind of bothered me a little bit. But she was also still pretty young, too. So, you know, you get more. She was 30. Experience. Was she 30? <laughs> what what do you mean pretty young she had a whole career and came back and like started a second career girl I'm 30 <laughs> <laughs> I swear I thought she was like 25 26 I mean it's maybe not too I'm far confused. off yeah maybe I'm confused but yeah that's for the same age range yeah um, and 30 I'm is really... young thank you well, I think you were saying it like she was young and that makes her naive, but I don't feel like you're like a young naive at 30. Um, no. I feel like you should know like how the world works a little bit at least. Uh, you it, know, like it's different than I'm not saying she's like some old broad. I'm saying like I don't think painting her as naive is fair, you know? <laughs> I don't know. Cause then she was in New York too, so she should have had experiences there. But then too, oh shoot, where was I going with that? I'll remember, and I'll bring it back up. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'll bring it back up. <laughs> okay. So just to sum that up, I do feel like she did a, a good job mm -hmm. keeping a balance of being realistic as one of the only Black families in Chagrin Falls while also not being traumatic, which is something that I know you've talked about before and something that I look forward to when I'm looking into books by black authors it's just every once in a while not having a traumatic experience while doing that <laughs> which again is hard because the conversation with race right now is a tough one but it's just nice to just live life sometimes and not be scared or traumatized yeah it's, it's really nice yeah it, I, mean, I mean you know I used to read books and have to picture them as being a black person because I was afraid of being traumatized in a book um but now I'm glad that we're starting to get cozy mysteries. I'm glad we're starting to just get like fun nonfictions and they're black. And I don't have to pretend that this blue eyed, blonde haired girl is actually black. Like, oh yeah, she got a weave. She got contact, you know? <laughs> so, you know, it's um, whatever. It's nice. So I'm really interested to see how they're going to continue this series. Like, is she going to find a dead body every time or is it going to be different mysteries? Yeah. I would love to see more of Rhea too in the future because the fact that she seemed like the voice of reason mm -hmm. most of the time and then at the end it was like she's ready to fight somebody because they stood her up and like <laughs> use her code to get medicine I'm like that is like such a hot and cold personality that I'm intrigued I want to see more of her but I also want to see like are they going to bring mysteries to her or she's going to find them I would read it for that alone like how are you going to keep this going <laughs> I wonder if they would do it from different perspectives not necessarily the friends but like the perspective from the father or the mother or the I pop pop. I read the synopsis of quite a few of them. Oh, and okay. it seems like it's Wynn every time who's the main Ooh. character. Okay. Well, okay. So that is questionable how, how she will go about it. I think it will probably get more and more unrealistic, but kind of just like, how does this ice cream shop keep having these mysteries? But then it's just like, does she turn into a detective shop? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> a detective shop. <laughs> but um, um it seems yeah. like it's still focused around the ice cream shop though because the next book is called a game of cones like ice cream cones in game of thrones uh -huh. that's cute i love fun so i knew i was gonna love this book <laughs> as soon as i saw it like that probably made me pick it up off a shelf by itself alone <laughs> you know okay. i can look at the the name of it every once in a while when i pass it go, ah, and then keep moving you know <laughs> nice <sighs> yeah. All right. So let's talk about the ending of the book. I was a little confused. So I'm going to recap it and you mm -hmm. tell me if I'm missing something. Okay. So they got to the events that they were preparing for, the mm -hmm. college event that they're catering dessert for. And some kid sent them to the second floor, which the event was not at. And it was actually the third floor. Um, I thought the kid was shady. Mm -hmm. because when they told the lady who was hosting it she said no that couldn't have happened why would he do that no i'm sure you guys are mistaken <laughs> which was weird right and they're sitting there talking and they see ari and the other employee who ended up being the villain mm -hmm. 
And they put two and two together that she is the villain somehow, randomly. I think they figured out that they used to be married. Um, that was the dating. Her, his employee and Steven, mm-hmm. who was found dead, used to be married. And now she's dating Ari, supposedly. Yeah. That's what she says. Um, somehow they figure out that her alibi, whether she was with Ari, is false. And just looking at her from across the room, this woman was supposed to have found out that they knew and followed Wynn downstairs and attacked her. Right. It was abrupt. It was abrupt and I just don't understand. Like, what did I miss? Yeah. <laughs> like, how did she know that they knew? I I feel like you were right about the kid being shady one. I think he was in on it. I think they probably paid him some way to get her alone, maybe. Because they, they I just don't know, like, if you're going around snooping in 20... Well, mm-hmm. About the kid, because I, I feel like I didn't finish explaining that. Like, Sorry. I guess that was just a coincidence. No, that's okay. I forgot to finish explaining it. Mm-hmm. I feel like that was a coincidence because I guess the significance of it is that he sent the grandfather, the grandfather to the second floor too. And that's how he was able to help her. Mm-hmm. So that's why she like harped on it because that's how, you know, the interruption, like the save the day moment happened. So I believe that that was just a like, a way to get them so there. Kid. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I just sometimes I feel like I wish the ending gets written first and then you get to the ending from the ending, I guess. I just feel like it was just wrapped up and so abrupt. Like I listened to it. I had to rewind it quite a few times. And even down to the end, I just I barely understood that the girlfriend was the killer. You know, because she stole her puppy or something like that. You know, that's the last like sentence. So I, it makes me feel kind of um dumb <laughs> for not saying exactly those last scenes and like the last like the conclusion. You know, and it didn't make me feel good at the end because I didn't understand. Yeah, like it was that's like, like ah. it's supposed to be very like succinct, yeah, like satisfying moments. Mm-hmm. And I don't know the so I guess. Yeah, the kid with the scarf was Steven and the girlfriend's son. Mm-hmm. But mm-hmm. somehow the other girl ended up with him. And that's why he was following them and why he was at the murder scene. Because she's, he saw his mom and went down. And the other woman was trying to get him back. So she was just being protective. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't understand how they ended up with the dog. I don't understand if they were like friends or not. <laughs> there was a lot I didn't get. Yeah, I feel like it deserves a reread. Yeah, I probably should have reread it again. I think I want to read it physically and not listen to it. I feel like yeah. I could re- I could take better notes. I feel like I could like get it back into my mind and get into the scenes a little bit better. It's just it's a lot of information to take in. It's a lot of scenery to take in. It's a lot of like things that's like slightly off of realistic, but still remember it's fiction. You know what I mean? It's a like, good time. Um, mm-hmm. I feel like this is like an episode like a 30 minute episode put into a book that was like okay you need another scene you know what i mean just like kind of cushion it out but then they just oh we ran out of time do the ending real quick you know like i just i want more but also want less if that makes sense i want more mystery less ice cream (laughs) i don't think they're going to talk about ice cream so much in every book or i I hope not. not but i i think it was setting the scene yeah I didn't mind the amount of ice cream talk because after they jumped into the murder mystery, it was no more like talk of recipes or anything like that. You know? A little bit. I Even if she doubled up the book, you know, have it be half ice cream, half mystery. I just want a little bit more and go a little bit more into the characters, but maybe that's what she does in her series, you know? Yeah. But I did okay. think it was interesting that she had um actually um, what's it? Uh, she had her thyroid gland removed, I think it was. I think that's like a very interesting thing. It's like, oh, I was feeling sick for so long and I came home, you know? Because I think like your thyroid is in your throat, right? And I thought it was kind of funny with ice cream. I was like, it could have been tonsils. That would have been really cool because, you know, kids, their tonsils get removed, they eat ice cream. So I don't know how to be cute. 
<laughs> you I want to find the most interesting things interesting that I like never think twice about. <laughs> <laughs> just kind of zoom it's in just, on something weird. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> That's why you have a book club so that you can think, you can, you know, see what other people are thinking about. Go like, oh, that chick's weird. Why is she thinking about time? So I was like, this is a murder mystery. <laughs> <laughs> good times good times <laughs> all right well i don't have any other questions do you have any other like any questions you want us to answer or final thoughts about the book oh i did have a question for you and i'm surprised you didn't ask uh, this question uh what kind of ice cream would you make something blueberry i love blueberry yeah. ice cream and cheesecake and honestly like blueberry cheesecake ice cream why not blueberry cheesecake ice cream <laughs> <laughs> what about you I would make an ice cream, but it would be more just like a fun way of having the classics, like the setup. So you would have like, like dirt ice cream and it would just be gummy bears and like have brownies that's like crumbled, you know? So like for like little kids, I was like, oh yeah, this is dirt. <laughs> You're eating dirt. <laughs> I've never been a fan. Even as a kid, I was never a fan of like these dirt cakes or dirt ice cream. <laughs> I think it's a cute idea. It's just too much sugar, like. Yeah. gummy worms and oreos and everything together i'm being a negative nancy though because i don't like chocolate that much and it's like mostly chocolate <laughs> i mean even <laughs> thinking like all oh, of sandy beach it could be like vanilla with um vanilla cake as the sand and then like maybe a cotton candy ice cream for the ocean or whatever it's like a little umbrella like a drink you know you know just like stuff it. like that i feel like i'm very like um like i have a i feel like i have a young soul so it's just like I would I would do more fun stuff like that. I feel like hers was more like artesian, like you said, Austin kind of, gentrified kind I of. I feel like whatever. <laughs> I think it's interesting that you're asking this question after you said you wanted less ice cream in the book anyway. Did you also? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I thought you were going to say you want you were you say you like vanilla, you know, vanilla flavors. I was like, you see, I said vanilla ice cream or chocolate ice cream. So you got me. <laughs> but no yeah that was right, the first thing would you thing. change your rating would you okay so final thoughts and would you change your rating of the book after our discussion hmm. so I like the idea of the book I like how she set it up as a series um, I think I'm going to keep the three and a half stars I think that's fair um, also being a newcomer to cozy mysteries but the three and a half star I will keep and my final thoughts, I love the book, but I think I'm just like, I need a little bit more. I need a little bit more. I would be interested to read another book just to see where she went with the rest of the characters. Agreed. Yeah. Okay. Well, as far as my rating, I think I will up it from a three, maybe to a four. Just thinking about like grading for the genre. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I would definitely read another one. Again, I just have to be in a certain mood to want to read it, but... Thinking about it as like an adult Scooby Doo is pretty fun. So, <laughs> yeah, if I ever yeah. want a cozy murder mystery, I would definitely come back to Abby Colette. She did a good job. Yeah, I think she did so too. I I liked it, and I think it was. I think it, I identified more with it. And I enjoyed it more because it was in a setting that I recognized as well. If it was a setting like in Nebraska somewhere I've never been, I was like, I'm a, you know, <laughs> so I wonder yeah. if other people was not from Cuyahoga things a bit a little bit more like yeah i rate it like a two you know <laughs> well i feel like the area made sense too just for the extra drama of like if you had an ice cream place in texas it doesn't matter what the season is if you're eating ice cream because it's hot yeah. you know <laughs> yeah if you have an ice cream shop in ohio which there are ice cream shops in ohio but a lot of them close down in the winter some of them stay open but mm-hmm. you know it's an interesting like place to have an ice cream shop like I business mean- is unpredictable I'm just, I'm just saying, like, because I know Cuyahoga instead of being Chicago, you know, yeah. <laughs> it's just like, I just, I didn't find a little bit more, even though I forgot that we lived there. Like, kind of, like, I knew it, but I didn't. So, yeah. <laughs> go ahead. I, I don't feel like <laughs> the fact that you didn't even know it was Cuyahoga means that it could have been in Chicago and you would have been fine. So... <laughs> I mean, girl, listen, you got to stop, like, tripping me up over my own stuff. Like, this is the second time in 10 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> I don't remember. <laughs> Nothing's you said. Okay. You're like, oh, I thought you wanted less ice cream. You asked him about the ice cream flavors. <laughs> well, 
<laughs> Think about what you're saying next time. <laughs> I mean, girl, you got me. <laughs> okay. So. Okay. So. Since that's the end of the discussion, we can announce our next book, which is I'm Not Yelling by Elizabeth Leba. And it will be a nonfiction. Yes. So I'm going to go ahead and read the synopsis mm -hmm. for us. Okay. Navigate corporate America fearlessly. Explore the data and hear the accounts of Black women in business who face work through and rise above workplace discrimination. This book offers a blueprint for Black women in business to tackle a toxic work environment and assert their rightful place. Facing obstacles such as imposter syndrome and structural racism, I'm Not Yelling armed you with the knowledge and strategy needed to succeed in the face of adversity, become a strong Black leader, and instill positive change in the workplace culture. I'm Not Yelling is your guide to understanding and implementing change in human resource management that promote diversity and inclusion. So that's going to be our book next week. So any Black women who's facing any kind of like struggle, microaggressions, anything like that in the workplace, this is definitely going to be the book for you. And if you're not a Black woman and you just are interested in helping out with diversity and inclusion in your workplace, definitely listen in and see like the different perspectives of someone who is going through that experience. Yeah, I'm excited for it. I haven't heard of this book, um, but it when you said if you're not a Black woman and you or you're not black, whatever, like, you know, um, a thing that I've read a lot lately is about being actively anti-racist as a white person. And you have to read from different perspectives. Um, so this, I feel like will be a good book for anybody to read, especially people who could be doing the microaggressions, you know? That's so, true. Yeah. Um, when I was working, I was in a couple of groups that were like diversity and inclusion groups with all different perspectives, like white, black, whatever race. And in that, like we had like a safe space where some people would talk about how they performed microaggressions in the past without knowing mm -hmm. and how they adjusted their behavior. And like, I, yeah, I think it's beneficial to learn up so that you're not caught out doing things like that or making people uncomfortable or, you know. And the idea yeah. is to not make you feel guilty if you have done it, is to, when you say anti-racist, you're working to not do it. So the person who's experiencing it doesn't have to find a way to deal with it. They, just, they don't have to deal with it anymore. No longer have that experience. So it's a good read for everyone is not to feel guilty or anything like that. It's to learn so we don't make the same mistakes later. So Yeah, agreed. Okay, so that's going to be the end of this episode, guys. Can't wait to see you next week. Joy, do you want to um, let them know where they can find us? Absolutely. Um, on TikTok and Twitter, we are Black Girl Reads Pod with um, Black is spelled B-L-K, Girl Read Pod. And on Instagram, YouTube, and Facebook, it's Black Girl Reads Podcast. B-L-K, Girl Read Podcast. So make sure you check us out, follow us, comment, share. <laughs> and I can't wait to see you guys next time. All right. Thanks, guys. Bye. See ya.